Due to the outbreak of the coronavirus, there has been a lot of fear and rumor. Compared to diseases throughout the human history, how deadly is the coronavirus? For comparison, I'm counting down ten of the most deadly infectious diseases throughout human history. By which I mean diseases you actually get from something, which means things like heart attack and stroke are not included. Number ten, AIDS. Yes, we're starting off the list with HIV/AIDS. For a disease that's only been discovered in the 80s, AIDS has certainly left its mark. First discovered in 1981, AIDS is responsible for at least 30 million deaths worldwide. Although we made astronomical leaps in terms of treatment in the past decade, we still don't have a reliable cure for it. But we certainly came a long way from the initial fear and skepticism to actually understanding it much more. The legacy of AIDS really comes down to human nature. From the initial fear to actually trying to hunker down and find a solution. Number nine, typhus, also known as typhus fever, and not to be confused with typhoid fever. Typhus has been described in literature ever since 1528 A.D. An infectious disease that's caused by bacteria. Typhus is usually transmitted to humans by parasites such as lice, fleas, mites, and ticks, which is why you don't hear about typhus that often, since most people don't really get infected by lice anymore. But during the peak of the spread of typhus, it has taken more than 50 million lives around the world, and continues to be a problem in places where sanitation is not really that great. Number eight, smallpox. For those of you that know what smallpox is, it's probably hard to imagine that a disease that's feared by so many is so low on the list. However, smallpox throughout history is responsible for at least 150 million deaths. In particular, the Antonian plague alone has caused more than five million deaths. Keep in mind, this happened during the Roman times. At at the peak of the Roman Empire, there was only about 55 million people in the entirety of Rome. So that plague alone comes down to one tenth of the entire population of Rome being dead. We've only been able to bring smallpox under control using vaccination since the 1800s, starting with the cowpox vaccine. Whereas from the 1970s, smallpox is essentially Wiped out. However, with a growing number of people not vaccinating, there is always a fear that smallpox isn't gonna make a comeback. Number seven, cholera. Cholera is one of those diseases that's faded out of the human consciousness. You don't ever hear about it anymore. However, throughout history, there were eight major outbreaks of cholera. The most recent one being in the 2000s in India. All in all, cholera has taken more than 250 million lives around the world throughout ages, and remains one of those diseases not to be taken lightly. Poor sanitation and lack of drinking water is usually the problem, but you never know when the next outbreak is going to be. Number six, measles. Now, measles is only something you've ever heard about when you actually take your children. For a vaccine, however, with the growing number of people not vaccinating their children, cases of measles is actually on the rise, which is alarming considering measles is accountable for at least 200 million deaths throughout human history. And something simple as a vaccine was able to bring the number drastically down during modern time. Yet, because of certain amount of unsubstantiated fear. Once again, we're seeing the growth of measles. This goes to show you that sometimes fear and rumors can actually trigger more problems in public health than the actual disease itself. Number five, malaria. One of the most prominent mosquito-borne diseases, 
Malaria is at least responsible for 400 million deaths throughout human history. Still a big problem in tropical regions where mosquitoes are readily abundant. Treatment of malaria has been one of the biggest topics in medical history. So much so that Chinese scientist Tu Youyou has actually won a Nobel Prize in medicine just because of her effort of isolating a compound that treats malaria. Number 4. Salmonella typhoid fever Salmonella is a bacteria that can cause anything from food poisoning to typhoid fever. When you think about food poisoning, you wouldn't assume that they will account for anything more than just a couple of unfortunate deaths due to diarrhea. However, typhoid fever has historically taken more than 400 million lives throughout different regions around the world. And with poor sanitation, salmonella can easily cause anywhere from mild food poisoning to actual severe food poisoning, causing deaths. With salmonella outbreaks popping up around here and there from time to time, we're never really getting rid of it anytime soon. Number 3. Tuberculosis Now we can still get tuberculosis nowadays, but people treat it much less seriously than in the past. However, in the past, tuberculosis is usually a very slow and painful death sentence, where people getting the tuberculosis will eventually suffocate because of it. All in all, at least close to 1 billion people has died from tuberculosis throughout history, including some of the most famous people, such as composers Chopin and Mozart. Although treatable nowadays, mortality rate of tuberculosis is still high. Every year, thousands of people still die from it. Number 2. Bubonic Plague Yep, good old plague. Even for those of you that have never heard about most of the previously mentioned diseases, the plague is probably something that pretty much everyone knows. The spread of the plague alone in Europe during the Middle Ages, known as the Black Death, not only shaped society as of then, but also took anywhere from 70 million to 200 million lives around Europe. Not to mention the Justinian Plague, which basically decimated the Byzantine Empire and um, killed around one quarter of the entire population of this planet. From that standpoint, the plague is really deeply rooted in our fear of diseases. So much so that the whole term plague is being used for any kind of disease to think of. Now, what disease can possibly top the plague? Before we announce our number one, here's a special feature that's not as deadly in terms of numeric values, but in terms of the fear is stoking people and mortality rate when you actually get the disease. That, of course, is Ebola. First identified in the 70s, Ebola has taken about 20,000 lives around the world. Small number compared to all the ones we've talked about. But what's frightening about Ebola is the sheer mortality rate. Anywhere from 75 to 90% of people who actually caught Ebola died from it. And that, in part, has contributed to why Ebola hasn't been able to spread so rapidly. Is that everyone who gets it most likely dies within a week of getting it. So they don't really have the time to actually spread the disease anywhere. Nonetheless, Ebola remains one of the most deadly disease if you actually catch it. And we're in some sense lucky that because it's so deadly, it doesn't really spread that fast. And here is our number one most deadly disease, the flu. Well, many of you might be thinking, how could that be the case? How, how could like the flu be so deadly? Well, throughout human history, at least one and a half billion people have died from the flu. And a single flu outbreak in 1918 from Spain actually killed 100 million people. What's interesting is that the strain of the flu 
from the Spanish flu H1N1 is the same one we got in 2009, which we call the swine flu. So influenza, or commonly known as a flu, is actually quite deadly if you get it when your body is weak. And to this day, we have no cure for it. Similar to how we are treating coronavirus right now, flu virus generally don't really respond that well with any kind of treatment. All you can do is treat the symptom and hope the body gets better. Now clearly coronavirus has a higher mortality rate than the flu. Most people get the flu don't die from it. But the mortality rate isn't that much higher. And in terms of actual treatment, all we can do is probably quarantine and um, treat the symptom. There's no concrete solution we have, just like there is no concrete solution we have against the flu. So as much as we're fearful, we've gotten accustomed to the flu nowadays. So why the fear of the coronavirus instead of actually just worrying about the flu every season? Where in reality, the effect of the flu is actually quite more dramatic in comparison throughout the history. Not to say that we shouldn't worry, but compared to getting the flu shot every year, what you can do for coronavirus is very limited. So if you were to want to protect yourself from any kind of diseases, it's actually better to actually get the flu shot every year than sitting home fearing of all this unknown disease that suddenly is going to kill everyone, which it hasn't shown that it will. It is spreading but it's not as bad as people assume it is. So here are the top 10 most deadly transmitted diseases around the world. Of course, I left out all the other diseases that are not really transmitted, but because of individual health, such as stroke and um, heart attack. But I hope this gives people a sense of how greatly affected our lives were before the advent of better healthcare and how much of an impact a disease can have on human society in terms of sheer number of people being dead. And you can draw conclusions from these, you can uh, speculate, but in comparison, now we're seeing the effect of the coronavirus being spread, it certainly is nowhere near the scale as any of these diseases mentioned. Would it possibly be the next big one? Who knows, it might be. But in general, it hasn't shown that it will be so deadly. It might be deadly, we have to treat it seriously, but there is no reason for us to fear for our lives because of it. Now I hope you guys have a nice day and overall stay healthy.